Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the modeling series. Um, this part will be about masking the molds. Um, the next step will be uh, the actual coating of the molds. Um, in this part I will tell you everything you need about uh, masking, um, what tape you can use, um, what, uh, da what dangers you will have to um, ship around, um, and well, in the end have a quality coating. So, let's have a start. <clears throat> Here you can see everything you will need for the, for the coating, um, yeah, for, the, for the masking. Um, I will do two examples, um, one for uh, a color pattern like this, a very simple color pattern, and the one I will building uh, now, which will be only white and a transparent uh, visible carbon finish. Let's see if I can bring it up here. No, you, you can't see the carbon, but it's it's actually transparent. Um, the, the underside here will be just two colors. I can show you, I can tell you why this occurs um, and so on. Okay, let's start. Um, the, the main uh, idea behind all the, um, the coating is and, and all, all the building, you're building from the outside to the inside. Um, that means you have to think about which uh, colors you want to paint in, uh, first and then second and then last. Um, I recommend um, if you're having colors, um, you uh, should use a, a back paint um, behind the color so that the color is more vibrant. Because when you have a, a white color, Behind this yellowish earth tone, um, it becomes brighter. Uh, be and if you don't do that, and the black carbon or transparent glass or the pink um, um, foam behind that will shine through. So that's um, uh, one thing that means um, the white will be done last. Uh, so it is on, on, the, uh, in, uh, on the inner side of the uh, paint layers. Um, in this part, I will do blue first, then uh, the, the earth tone, and then the white. So in the end, we will have something like this. Um, you can see here there are some uh, issues that you have to address. Um, you um, just you need more than just um, creating this line. You will have to cover all the area in the mold that will not be spray painted. So we have to cover all this area um, when, when uh, spraying the blue paint. And then covering all this area when um, spraying the, the, the earth tone. And in the end, you can um, cover all of it with white. And you have to be very careful with, with covering it because when you don't do it, you have something like this, where the earth tone slightly missed the, the, the tape that was here and uh, was blown under under the cover so that you have something like this. And you will need to be careful uh, about what t uh, about what tape you use because um, if you use tape um, and are uh, and and you are a bit um, you are not very careful with all the um, color dust in the air, you will uh, create something like this. Um, this was, that, that's an example, I first did uh, the earth tone, then I removed all the covering here and here, um, and I left this mold in my workshop while uh, spraying the white for the other molds, like there, um, and, and the dust just fell down on the mold um, and uh, stuck to the residue of the tape that I was using back then. So. Um, be careful with all the dust that's flying around um, and store your molds outside of the room when you're uh, painting something uh, very different. Like here, uh, the, the white will be seen very, very good when, when uh, black is under, under, underneath it. Okay, and of course, I will just uh, put this aside. Um, we will do something more intricate. Um, I will try to do this uh, color here uh, and also we will 
uh, do something like this because you want to have the name of the plane on it um, so you make a, well this th this is done with a with a plotter um, and you can glue it onto the mold and remove it and in the end you will have the um, the name of the plane or whatever you choose to uh, write on it uh, on the plane so that's what we're doing too um, the first step is to protect the edges of the mold. Here's a finished um, example of a nose cone. Um, if you, when you're spraying the mold, you don't want to spray all of it. Um, you want to spare the edges here um, so that you have a, a, a clean mold in the end of the day. So the first thing is um, to um, cover the edges of the, of the mold with a masking tape. This can be any cheap tape you, you will find um, uh, or, uh, that you can find in, in your, well, even in the supermarket sometimes. So I will use a, a cheap um, a painter's tape um, that you can tear off by hand and just, um, be, and, and because uh, this layer will be the last that you, that you will tear off while uh, painting, this has to be the first that you um, apply onto the mold. So I will just cover the mold with the tape. Um, yeah. ah, you see the first arrows. That's no big issue. Um, you should leave a, a small margin on the edge. Um, so that you can see the edge here. That's that's just a few millimeters that I'm leaving here, so that when you are putting the molds together, um, you will have no um, no stripe there that has no color, <clears throat> and it helps with uh, releasing in the end. It's because uh, epoxy um, more sticks to the mold than um, the the color itself. Um, okay, let's go on here. I will leave just a small margin all over the mold. You can tear it or you can just continue with it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to win any beauty contest with it. This also has the uh, advantage that you cover the the holes here that you use to centering the, the molds when you're closing them. So everything will be nice and clean. Okay, that's pretty much it. So that's the first one. Um, normally I just leave this edge, um, but you can also tape it if you want to. So this, if, if your mold has a a, back, a, a bleeding bleeding edge in the end and, and then more mold in the end, I would recommend to tape that too. But uh, with this kind of mold, um, you actually don't have to. So now the second one, these are both the upper sides of the mold. The underside will be quite easy um, because I will do uh, pure transparent uh, visible carbon thing. Okay. You see this is no rocket science. pretty much it. Um, now this is, is the upper side. Um, if I want to do something like this, um, I would have to spray the white color first and after that the transparent one. Um, so I will um, mask the transparent one um, and this should be exactly along the 
hinge line. So if you're um, good prepared, you will have the hinge line marked on your mold, which I have. There it is. And this side too. Then we will have a straight line like this. Okay, looks right, feels right. Um, and for uh, masking directly on the on the surface that we will see in the end, um, I, I don't recommend tape like this. And um, you have to be careful with the adhesive on the tape on the underside of the tape that it doesn't uh, damage the um, potting agent. Um, that you will have to check yourself. It, de it depends on what system you're using. Um, for this purpose, just for creating a sharp edge, um, I recommend using uh, a specialized uh, tape that you can find in, in, a, in a painter shop um, just for creating these lines. This is by 3M471 Plus, made in the US of A. Um, <clears throat> and this actually leaves almost no residue on the mold um, and it's flexible you can even do curve, curved lines with it mm. and it's just for creating the edge not for actually masking so I am creating a straight line between the two markings that I've just done using the red markings I just did I just made Okay. I recommend leaving a small um, uh, part on the end so that you can uh, tear it off quickly when you're finished. <clears throat> okay, and then for the actual um, masking, so now we created this line here. And for the actual masking, I use another painter's tape, which has a very, very low or very few ad ad adhesive on it. Um, it's used for painted walls or something, uh, so, so that you don't tear off the paint when you're creating something. Um, and now I will just apply this. And you see, I use um, the specialized tape to create the edge and the, well, cheap tape um, to actually mask that one. So you cover all the area with tape that you don't want to paint in that step or spray in that step. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for a setup like this. Now in this case you would spray, uh, spray the white, then remove this tape here and then do the transparent coating and then it's finished. <clears throat> now let's do something like this. Okay, actually I, I will remove uh, the stuff that I'm creating now to, to make just a black and white one, but just for fun I will do this. Okay, uh, we, we covered the edges. Um, now the first part will be the blue. Um, and after that, you can see there's an earthen line here, so we will have to cover something like this area downward and this small stripe. So what we will do is um, we will take a ruler in centimeter, that's important, because you uh, don't know how many inches a <laughs> centimeter is. No, just kidding. Um, that's 18 and a half, 18 and a half, and you can just mark it here. Um, I'm measuring from the start of the elevator, so it's, you, you need a fixed point so that you have a, a, a parallel uh, line here. 
and I'm doing this here too. 18 and a half centimeter. Be careful just uh, only to uh, mark on surfaces that are not going to be painted. And again, I will create the edge with this specialized tape. And uh, the edge has to be on, on the white side. No, uh, stop. Oh, I did the wrong, I did the wrong one. <clears throat> but that's no problem. Mm, here that's 27.6, 27.5. Okay, so like this. And here it's also 27.5. All I'm doing here is low tech, as you can see, um, as I'm not building that uh, many planes that uh, a bigger setup would be uh, useful. So, okay. But I'm doing something wrong again because um, the blue would be the first color to spray, but not the first color to mask on the mold. Um, the white I don't have to mask because it's covering all of it. Um, then I would need the yellow one. Um, if, I'm, if I want to prepare the mold correctly, I will need to do the yellow one first now, because I'm just looking for the marking here and here. Okay. Be sure to um, really make it stick to the mold, um, even in a highly curved area like this. That's why you need a very flexible uh, tape. If, if, the, if there's some air under here, you will, uh, the, the paint will um, move under the tape and leave, well, um, not very pretty marks. Okay, so that's this, the first layer. There's something wrong here. Ah, I just used the wrong side of the marking. Okay, that looks better. Hmm. I'm thinking about redoing it. I think I made a measuring uh, error. 18.5. 18.5. That's it. Okay. Here, 18.5. Ah, okay. There was an error in measuring. Again, 18.5. That would be somewhere here. Um, now, if we want to spray this uh, earth tone, um, we would need to cover all this area. I um, think we are uh, spraying behind the blue too, so that's why we don't cover this area. Um, so we need to cover this too. How do we do it? Very simple. Just take um, a piece of paper or a piece of just foil or something. You can use anything um, that you like. Mm. Cut it to a rough shape that you need. And you glue it on there. 
Okay, just a bit less here. Okay, nice. Okay, and this is just for covering the area as with the transparent uh, one that we've done before. Um, I would first apply something like this so that the margin for error um, for the uh, paint going under here is, is bigger. Um, and then apply this. Just tape it to the mold in a way that the color will, will not reach that area. Okay. Here. I will just tape it around the back. That's it. And the degree in which you have to cover the this area depends on um, your workshop. Um, how good you can let the spray dust let disappear. If you have a proper system for evacuating the spraying the, the painting area, then there will be less precautions to take. Mm. But if you're doing it in a closed room, which I did <laughs> in the beginning, um, then you have to be very careful because the dust will be everywhere. Okay, that's it. So that's this color now. And now we will uh, get to the blue. I also marked the blue here. Okay, so this will be quite easy. Um, just take the cloth you had from polishing and make sure everything is clean. The wax should be hardened now. Um, I, I recommend to wait um, well, maybe a day or so after applying the wax so that it has time to, to harden and, and form a very strong surface. So this now is the the, the blue area and we need to cover this area too. So we do that again, same procedure. Okay, that's enough. Um, just take it, cover this again. <coughs> this tape can be um, Taken from the mold very lightly, so that you don't, so that you don't uh, tear off the blue uh, special tape for the edges during the coating process. <clears throat> That's why I'm using this one. Um, and now this again. Mm. You don't have to win a beauty contest with this. Okay, so that will be the first step for the blue, but wait, there's this small stripe left. That's why I'm having this very, very small one um, to create thin lines. You can be very creative with this. Okay. This is just... A your hand-eye coordination. Okay, so this is a properly covered uh, masked mold for the coating. The first step will be the blue. The blue will have this stripe left here that we can see here. Then we rem rem will remove the earth tone. Oh, I missed the tape here. <laughs> there. Okay. Then we will remove this one 
um, to and, and, and the stripe to paint the earth color. And uh, when all the, uh, when the earth color is done, we remove everything else and cover the whole mold in white, so that the colors will be vibrant and uh, bright and not dark. Um, and after that, we will remove the uh, masking of the edge of the mold. So that's pretty much it. Um, a, a hint for this, um, you can only use this technique um, with uh, parting agents like wax or, or fluid parting agents. You, you cannot use it with um, the PVA um, parting agent because PVA uh, forms a, a, a very small uh, layer um, like, a, like a foil in, in the mold um, that will be very easily torn off when you remove the tape. So uh, if you're doing uh, this uh, with PVA, you cannot do any um, uh, color stuff in the mold. Uh, you have to use one color for, for the whole uh, part. Okay, now for something a bit more difficult. <clears throat> the wing. I'll just store that somewhere else. Okay, mm. now this um, color scheme will be um, quite similar to the tail. We'll have a, this is um, the right wing upper side of the mold. Um, on the upper side I would like to have the name of the plane um, and again the uh, visible carbon um, rudder surfaces for, for, for the flap and the aileron. Um, and a pure white for the rest of the wing. So what I'm doing now is um, the first layer uh, in this case um, I'm just uh, leaving leaving the color markings. You, you can do this with the same technique as, as this. Um, I will just show you how to use this. How to use uh, um, oh, what's Schablone in English? Yeah, I'm asking like this. Um, this is uh, within. It, it, it is plotted. The the, the paint, uh, the the black part has been cut out in in this one, um, and it's um, mirrored. So when you are uh, spraying the mold or when you are painting, you have to think in 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 a mirrored surface. So you cannot read this now, but it will say grain in the end. Um, I've cut this to the right size. I know the size of my flap, which starts here, um, and I know the size of my um, of the small edge back here, which is three millimeters, where, where the molds touch each, uh, each other, and, and not more. Um, so I will just glue this here. I already uh, cut it to, to a size that I would need, which exactly aligns with the um, with the hinge line on the top. So now let's just clean this part again. As you can imagine, I already did. Um, the waxing with this one. So you, you remove the, the protective layer on the on the back. Here, yeah. this one will glue not very heavily to the mold. Here, yeah, that's transparent, <coughs> and then just. Glue it on where it has to go. Be sure not to have any um, bubbles of air in it. That would be quite disastrous. 
Okay, not optimal. So now we see black on black. I think that's enough. Okay. I don't see any bubbles in the important parts. Um, this mask will also be removed at the end of, of, the, of the painting. This will be quite difficult, but I can see in the reflection that it is on there. Then you remove the protective tape, because right now the actual um, letters would be covered, but we want this to be white. Just have to be careful. For the letters I chose a font, um, which is a stencil font. Um, which has no um, aisles mm, of masking material left, so which will, you can see that in the G, for example, um, which has this connected part in the middle of it. So if you take off the mask, um, it all comes apart very easily. Um, I, advise you to um, make sure that everything sticks to the mold, that there are no bubbles and the, and the edges um, can be sharp. Okay. Now with this, um, I already created the, um, the hinge line. That's already the, the correct measure. Um, and now I will look for <coughs> The other side of the mold, there's a marking for the for the hinge on the on the upper side. Now we'll again uh, use this for the edge. Um, and I will put on a straight metal. This one is just a, a steel thing. Um, it's straight, it's quite thick, so it doesn't bend. And on the downside, I taped on some tape um, to have no scratches in the mold. So because this tape usually bends a little bit when you are tearing it um, over, over long distances, um, I use this one as a, as a measure too. So I have a marking I have a marking here where the hinge line will be. I put that on there and again on the other side. Um, you can fix it if you want to. I'll just show that. Yeah. Okay. Um, with something like this. Um, okay. And the other side too, so that it doesn't come apart. Okay, that's it. Now this doesn't move, <clears throat> and you can just tape this one very easily. Again, make sure that in the highly curved surfaces it sticks, cut it off, and that's it. Now 
again we created the edge with this tape you can always correct that here with removing it and pushing it in that's it and now we cover the rest with this covering tape One slightly overlaps. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the wing. If you want to do a fancy stuff, please just go on, do it. Um, I recommend having masking stuff like this um, already pre-cut so that you don't have to mask all the intricate details yourself. <clears throat> and well, if you are, um, if you looked at it correctly, you would see that I missed something. I didn't um, mask the edge of the mold, but that doesn't, that's not very difficult here. Again, just cover everything. I like to cover the inlets for the, the torsion bolts too, and for the joiner, so that it doesn't get too much paint. it and now for the front okay I'll turn it around for you to see If you do it correctly, you can um, remove this tape in, in one go from from this from the um, start of the wall. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's all you need to know about masking at least for a very simple setup. Mm. I hope you learned something. Um, please like, sub subscribe and leave a comment if you uh, think something can be done more efficient. And uh, see you in the next, um, wait, ah. see you in the next uh, part of the series, which will be about the coating itself. Uh, so we will have a trip at the coating chamber. Okay, see you, bye.